So in this problem, we're given these relationships between all these distances and 660 feet. I'm going to label my units here. Um, in one furlong, so that means 660 feet equal one furlong. I'm going to write fur. And one half, one half of a fathom, it's hard for me to say, equals one yard. So we, we want to know how many fathoms are there in one furlong. So let's rewrite this bottom equation right here and set it up so uh, multiply both sides by two and get one fathom equals two yards. Okay, well, one furlong equals 660 feet. Remember that one yard equals three feet. So what does that mean? Well, let's make the connection here between furlongs and yards, and that'll help us connect two fathoms. So instead of 660 feet, we want to know how many yards that is. Well, for every three feet, we have one yard. So let's divide 660 by three to find how many yards we have. And that is 220. So that means that one furlong equals 220 yards. Well, here in the fathoms, every two yards we have one fathom. So let's divide 220 by two. And that is 110. That means we have 110 fathoms, which equals 220 yards, which equals one furlong. So there are 110 fathoms and one furlong. In this problem right here, <clears throat> it's a substitution problem. We're given x and we want to know if we plug this value of x into the equation, what would the value of y be? So 6x, it says right here, I'm going to follow this equation, 6 times 3. And then that times, in parentheses, 2y minus 3 times x, which is 3, and that equals 18. Well, let's deal with these parentheses. 6 times 3 is 18. And then these parentheses, 2y minus 9. And that equals 18. Um, so going from there, read 18 times 2y is 36y minus 18 times 9. So 9 times 10 is 90, plus 9 times 8, which is 72, is 162. That equals 18. Moving on. So 36y minus 162 equals 18. So I want to know what y is. So I'm going to first, well, I'm going to leave that alone. But I'm going to add 162 to both sides. That gives me, that gets rid of this right here. And 18 plus 162 is 180. And now we're going to divide both sides by 36. Now, 36 times 5 is 180, so that means 180 divided by 36 is also 5, and y is going to be 5. In the next problem, it's very similar. Now they're getting us a proportion, and they have these three variables, n, k, and x. They're telling us that n is 4, k is 13, and we want to find out what x is. So I'm going to put those values in, 20 over 4, equals 13 over something and I'm going to simplify this fraction right here 4 over 20 divide numerator and denominator by 4 we get 1 fifth and that's going to equal 13 over x how do I solve this well I'm going to multiply both sides by x because we're dividing by x here that gets rid of the x x divided by x is 1 and 1 is irrelevant when we're multiplying and dividing over here, we now have x divided by 5 equals 13. I took the x, multiplied it by 1 fifth. x times 1 is x. Over 5 is x over 5. And now we're going to multi multiply both sides by 5. Well, 5 times x divided by 5, well, 5 divided by 5, right? It doesn't change anything. But 13 times 5, 5 times 10 is 50, plus 5 times 3, which is 15, is 65. And our answer for x is 65.